Hello, and welcome to another episode of No Small Roles, a D&D podcast where there are no small roles and no high roles, as without Orin, the Abraka lads are now the average lads. <laughs> so average. So punny. So average. <laughs> Did anyone roll above a 10 last time? <laughs> I don't know. Um, Probably not. Maybe. Probably not, not for your investigation, I tell you. It was sad. <laughs> I'm David Knight, your Dungeon Master, and I'm joined by two ex-frogs and their patient bystanders. So say hi, everyone. Ribbit. Hello. <laughs> I'm a patient bystander. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I believe you were all settling into a massive bush around a hole. Is that right? Yeah, getting really Absolutely. snug in there. <laughs> right in there. Are we still in the brothel? <laughs> <laughs> well, Show me the verge, my friend. <laughs> let's cue the theme tune and find out. <laughs> Woo! Hmm. Bush edition. Prepare your party of players and polyhedral dice Your tragic backstory better be worth the sacrifice Seize your sheets and d20 Let's play D&D Your haggard character swaggers with daggers in each hand You've all discussed what you must, but even best laid plans Take a turn when checks are missed Roll initiative Brandish your blades don't fail your saves No risk too great, no choice to roll This is your story No ghost, no glory Confront your fate with every roll Every Inside, one who will pay the price Then chance of success or rest upon the dice No risk too great, no choice to fold This is no small rolls So, having been teleported into a field by the Petra-possessed Orin Juna called the party's artificer to see why he was not with them the news from Orin was that Petra needed his help with some things, and he'd rejoin them as soon as possible. And satisfied that they had indeed heard from Orin himself, the party confirmed that Petra had delivered them to the farmland on the opposite shore of Kissing Beck. Spotting the expected henge atop a nearby hill, the party flew across the rivers to reach it, landing in the Ferragold tea fields. Finding a well-like hole in the centre of this henge, Juna and Enkidu polymorphed themselves into frogs and were lowered in a little cup into the underground stream below. In froggy fashion, they swam along the stream, with Gwendolyn and Gaius becoming increasingly worried that their friends might be trapped in the well. Luckily, the stream led the frogs to a small pond lower down the hill, and on returning to their own forms, they realised that the stream's water had rejuvenated their magical ability though perhaps with a slight cost at a later time. Using gathered tea leaves, Juna cast divination within the henge, asking what would happen if its power were to be used to its full potential, and her answer came with the bountiful growth of tea leaves. After a quick call with Kasula to check on the horses left in Forlos Vale, and another with Ginger, who was riding a bison and suggested looking to folklore and stories for answers, the party settled into a night's sleep in the new bushes in the centre of the henge. And that's almost where we pick it up. Oh. So, as everyone's falling asleep, Enkidu, oh. yes. you don't normally need sleep. Obviously, in your body, it's it's not a requirement for you. You have performed sleep and have tried to dream in different ways, but mm-hmm. you don't need it. Except tonight. Ooh. Oh. As you're sort of sat there in your sort of, not trance-like state, but like sort of unmoving motion just watching over Mm -hmm. your friends you can feel well that kind of caffeine crash coming on and the sort of that that magical energy that had been given to you by drinking this water starts to fade and it fades fast and you cannot keep your eyes open 
How nostalgic. And you fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Wingthrop update. It's a software. <laughs> yeah, if you could just see about it, it just needs to... Please yeah. restart this your software soft- This is software. This, is, this needs to be patched yeah. immediately. Mm-hmm. Now, all of you, as you sleep in the middle of this henge, settled into uh, bushes of tea leaves... Bush. You all... Bush. Uh, you all have a very calm dream, but you all dream of tea. Oh! Ooh. Are we absolutely bushed? <laughs> hey! It's yes. going to be a long <laughs> night! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, each of you have a very similar dream, and if you've got any way to mark down some, some writing or anything, um, I want you to not to influence each other, but you each are sat at an almost tea party-like situation opposite someone, and they are gentle and uh, warming, and you very much enjoy their company. So if you could just write a description of that person. It's not someone that you know. It's not a familiar person. It's an entirely new person, but they also feel like an old friend in so many ways. So yeah, if you could just jot down for yourselves. how it is that like that person looks like, what uh, what you talk about, and just how you enjoy their company. And through the power of editing, ten minutes has gone by. So, I think Gwendolyn, you're probably the first person to wake up. You all kind of wake up at a similar time, but Gwendolyn, you're the first, I would say, as the least magical of the group. Yeah. And you are not in the bushes. Oh. You were all very much uh, lying in beds. Oh. In a very, it's a very nice looking room. Um, Mm -hmm. It's a very comfortable bed, actually. You know, nice pillows under your head. The sun is shining through through the window. And as you sort of wake up and look over at the other few beds in the room, June is in one, Gaius in another, and Kidu is, is lying there as well. Uh, and they're all also slowly waking up. A uh, uh, bit disorientated. Um, Gwendolyn kind of takes in the situation and uh, runs to the window to see what she can see. Mm. Um, you can see um, one of the rivers outside um, and beyond it, kissing back the town. You can actually hear from sort of having run over to the window to look out, you can hear a lot of sort of hubbub coming from the town itself. You can almost hear like little strands of bits of music playing from in amongst, but you can't quite see anything. So you look down to either side of this, uh, out of this window and you can see a small bridge over the river, not too far from the building you're in. Okay. Uh, everyone? Are you, are you all okay? <coughs> Wake up. Um, <sighs> wait, wait, you didn't tell me your oh. name. Oh! Uh, what the heck is this? This isn't a bush. What the... What? No. what? Where are we? It's distinctly less bushier than how we fell asleep. Gaius immediately starts, like, patting himself down underneath the covers, like, looking yeah. for his, like, coin purse. Kidu does the same. Just oh, pat yeah, himself so down, check the floor. Yeah, and Angina. She got all her things. Yeah, all of your things, anything that you had, like, in pockets, are still there. Um, but your bags and things are kind of piled up at the end of each of your beds. Um, as if they've been left there for you, ready to go. Is there anything in the room to indicate, like, where we are? Um, like, yeah, as you sort of have a... Logos or names or anything. <laughs> Hotel stationery. Not logos as such, but, um, yeah. Um, as you do sort of, like, have a quick sort of take into an account of the room, um, it does have the feel of an infirmary. Like, there's a few cupboards with um, sort of small potions and things. There's... Um, hmm. Uh, you know, like medical tools that are there. Not they don't look used or anything, but like in case of an emergency, those kinds of things. Bandages, herbs, all of that in 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 the various cupboards on shelves around the place. There's one desk. There's a a door at the far end uh, with a small desk, sort of in front of it, and you can tell that it's it's you know it's filled with almost medical paperwork. Gwendolyn's going to rifle through her bags, check she's got her music box, check Gubbins is still there. Mm-hmm. The important things. Yep. June is going to do the same and check that the caddy's there and stuff like that. 
Yeah, the caddy's there. And Kitty's wanted to check the papers and see what they've written about us, if anything. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> as you kind of have an explore, yeah, and all of your belongings, nothing has been taken. The paperwork, just details. Um, it's kind of hourly reports. Uh, and most of them just say, like, no change, still sleeping soundly, nothing to worry about, we're still waiting. But then in Kidu, as you're kind of like working back through these reports, you find one that just describes the situation of the Ferragold tea field security finding you all. I thought so. <laughs> and being unable to wake you, bringing you down here. Um, Gaius will like lean over in Kidu's side and just be like, uh, and Kidu, what's, what's today's date? Like, how long has it been since we've been asleep? Um, it checks the date of the last of the report of when mm. they found us. See if it's dated. It has been two days. Oh! Whoa! Yeah, as you sort of look through these reports, uh, yeah, very much two days have gone past and you have slept soundly through them. Oh my God. Okay. 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 We could. How does everyone feel, by the way? How do we feel, David? Do we feel normal? Um, yeah, you all feel incredibly rejuvenated, as if you just had a very long rest. There's no real grogginess to it, having woken up. Um, yeah, you feel fine. Mm. I, I feel quite rejuvenated. Yeah, I feel great. Two days! Yeah, how, Enkidu, how were you out for that long? You don't even sleep, right? Yeah, that's weird. No, no. yeah. That's really weird. I think, I th whatever we imbibed, uh, really just caught up to me. I just couldn't keep my eyes open. Yeah. Wow. It was like a, it was like I'd gone without sleep for like days and then just couldn't fight it any longer. Did you, did you guys have a dream about tea? Yeah. I did you? Dreamt about having tea with someone who I never met but felt really familiar. Yeah, I had a weird one as well, but I'm just curious. So, so you had a dream about tea. I had a dream about tea, and and Kido, Gwen, Gwen, what about you? Yeah, I had a dream. I was like at this tea party. It was really nice, warm, welcoming person, but I didn't know them either. I I was I was having a lovely tea with uh with someone in mine as well. Do you remember a name? I I can't remember who I spoke no, to. I I didn't know the person, but they had a very similar mark to mine, um, just here, and she pointed to the front of her neck, on the front of their neck. Oh. It was, it was very lovely, um, mm. but yes, not, not someone I've ever known. Was it, was it a man, or was it like a, a halfling, or, or a, what, like... They, they were a gnome. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. What about you? Well, I had this, like, uh, this, uh, this uh, woman... Um, with like big, like red, like wild hair, like tied up into a tight um, ponytail at the back there, with like green eyes, beautiful blue dress, and she was like smiling and joking around, and uh, it was a, uh, it was a pleasant time, but I was just a bit thrown by you know having this nice conversation with her, and then suddenly waking up in this bed and everything, and uh, it it felt kind of weird, like it was all connected, because mm. obviously we all felt rejuvenated by the tea, and I mean. This is a weird place, not going to lie. Yeah. Um, that's and yes. and Kido, did you have a dream? I did. With, with, a, with, a, with a person as well? Yeah. A person. Uh, like a gnome or, or a, what, 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 who? Uh, half orc, I think. Um, gray skin, um, gray hair, top warrior, top knot, leathers, eye patch, big sword on the table. But she looked really relieved and just like relaxed and happy to be there wherever the heck there was bright field with flowers and small creatures flitting through the air okay that's interesting because yeah i had like this dead grove with these like skeleton everywhere else everyone else on the table was like skeletons drinking like tea and when they were drinking it's like they were going through like the jaw and they just kept like like cascading down the rib cages and stuff Ooh. like that oh, wow. yeah it was weird it was weird but yeah mine was a little a little less weird but very comforting yeah, I felt yeah. I felt like I was I was back in my home in Splinter Falls. Mm. It was sort of nice to be home. Yeah, it felt like it felt very like very like I was yeah being like welcomed. It felt like I was being very uh you know uh, reassured almost. Like, yeah, I don't know. Like maybe we should go and have a look. Um, 
Around? Around, yeah. Like, who, 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 whose building is this? Who's, is this the hospital? Is this the... Just before we do, there's a question. I, I had a dream to too. Yeah, sorry. I didn't Delhi. get to describe my person. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I want Kitty's to join in the game. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to join in the game. I don't want to be left out. <laughs> uh, Gwendolyn, what about you? It's, it's going to be a real <laughs> flat balloon, but... <laughs> Um, oh yes, I had this. Um, this, uh, and I had a gnome as well. Um, kind of very bright, shining eyes. A, a older man with a, a grey hair and a long beard, but also grey hair all tied up on top of his head, and wearing these these green robes. And he just he loved tea so very much. And and there were beautiful white lotuses all over the table. It was it was really quite stunning. Oh, that sounds um, He was kind of like a. An uncle type person, um, and yes, it was it was plush and lovely. Who knows who I'm describing? <laughs> <laughs> no Avatar idea. fans, little the... <laughs> who could that possibly be? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just oh. I'm just astro- describing Uncle Iroh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, and it was it was just really lovely. Some of the best tea I think I've ever drunk. Curious. Mm. Very curious. I'm eager to find someone who can maybe explain what's happened. Yes. Before that, though, what if we've been arrested? We got found by security. I, surely we'd be tied up or something or strapped down or... After they Have our belongings us, right? taken off us. Mm. I mean, the worst comes to worst, we have to pay a fine. But like, I, I suspect we'll be all right in that front. Also, as far <laughs> as I know, we haven't done anything wrong. I mean potentially some minor trespassing mm. but other than that we yeah. just drank some water yeah some really strong water very strong water yeah should i go out into the corridor should i go and ask somebody about this then yeah I- i'll come with you guy i think we shouldn't be on our own yeah i think we should just get our stuff and yeah, go out okay. and see like i don't need to i'm well rested i don't need to stay any yeah. longer we gather our things, and I presume we will slowly start filing out then, David. <laughs> Just before I go, very quick. Sorry, yeah, apart from Mankidu. Are our names in this thing? In this little medical report? Uh, yes, yes they are. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Our actual names. Interestingly, uh, it, they are all of your names. The only one that stands out as, as not being, uh, as she's currently called, is Carhilda, is written uh, in medical <gasps> reports. Uh, Lots of different places. Oh, no. Oh. Interesting. That's interesting. Are you sure you want to go and ask how we got here? They could be looking for us. <laughs> yes, Juna says, and takes, <laughs> the, <laughs> takes the papers and keeps them. Are the names, like, everybody's full names? Like, the names that we got, like, listed when we were at the Wingthrops? Um, or... Mm, that's a question. From... It's everybody's first names, I'll say, at the very okay. least. Um, and I will explain why as the story progresses. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, as you kind of gather up these these medical documents, these, these paperwork, and um, start edging your way uh, out, the door isn't locked, um, opens into a, a very nice corridor, um, and you can actually see uh, somebody moving about at the far end in... Kind of like a, a an overcoat type robe, uh, very like sort of sleeves rolled up, almost like a little penny in front, and they're um, pushing a, a trolley just up toward the room, toward you, uh, and on spotting you, sort of waves and says, "Oh, um, if you could just wait, you're awake, you're awake." Yeah, I, yes. I'll go get yes. the doctor. I'll get, I'll get the doctor. Um, and they turn, dash off for a moment, and very quickly sort of streaming around the corner comes uh, uh, an older chap sort of half elf with a with a thin beard um, slightly balding head um, a, a same kind of uniform on with sleeves rolled up um, and he sort of stumbles forward oh uh, wonderful you're you're awake good um, how are you all feeling is everything okay uh, yeah we feel great don't don't move too fast you it's been a few days I can imagine legs are jelly and all that uh, we, we, we feel great actually sorry where are we and and uh yes of course i can imagine what's happened? Don't worry, if you if you all <laughs> sit down on your beds I'll, I'll i'll explain um i, I should like a one last check before i i let you all go as well 
Uh, 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 sorry, we, we know it's on the documents above upstairs. Are we, are we downstairs? Sorry, did I, I think we just bit? literally come uh, out of the room. Kind of like yeah, oh, first floor. But yeah. Okay. Um. So we we just looked on the documents in our room, and we know couldn't happen, but noticed that you guys like. I've got our names written down, and you know, for GDPR purposes, I need to give consent before my name is written down. I just want to know where, where, where did you get that from? Yes, um, yes, yeah. of course. Um, well, well, uh, this is these are the Ferragold Tea Field offices. We obviously have an infirmary on site in case anything happens to staff and, and so on. Um, but as you all signed up to the, uh, we found your stamps uh, about your person as we were looking to identify you. The, oh. the your tea tournament stamps. Uh, of course. Of course. And yes. so, luckily, yeah. we managed to match those to to the documentation and uh, to discover who you were, uh, if you were, if we could help you in any way, huh. and so on. That's rather clever. That's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> crap. Uh, well, I suppose we should sit down for a moment and, and, and yes. let you check us over. We w- we wouldn't want to go yes. out. Thank you. Uh, by the way. No, Thank of you. course, of course, it's the very least that the Ferro Gold Company in the state could uh, could do. Um. So. He kind of leads you back in, and yeah, it does sort of a, a very obvious uh, sort of physical medical check. You know, checks your eyes, checks sort of has you open your mouth, uh, sort of cough, checks pulses, uh... like all of those <laughs> kinds of things. Um, listens to your heartbeats, and you know, is very happy that you are safe. Um, Could I insight check him whilst he's doing yeah, this? Please, someone um, please. Uh, what I would like to know is if he. Uh, spe- like specifically, if he sort of feels like they could be responsible for what's happened to us, and if he's checking that we're okay, to check that we're not gonna be like whatever the in-world version of like suing a big company who's uh, doing something untoward is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, make your insight check. <laughs> Fifteen. Fifteen. Um, a hundred percent. Yep. <laughs> this is cool yeah and to to double down on that feeling um as you kind of as he's sort of pottering about and then like is writing some quick last reports um he does look a bit confused he doesn't really know where he's put the other reports for all of a second they seem to be missing from his table but he does pull out some extra paperwork uh, <laughs> for documents and he just said uh, no um before I do let you leave. Everything you, you all seem very healthy and uh, and uh, at about your own wits and so on and so forth again. Um, but before you leave, um, I you are required to sign uh, just here if you could. Um, very simple document. Uh, it's just to uh, well, obviously you know we found you within our property in this state. Two full days, completely knocked out. So uh, you just need to sign here to prove that the Fairy Gold Company Estate and uh, our produce have had no part in your conditions currently or moving forwards. And that any slanderous rumours that say otherwise, um, we all agree to be incorrect, <laughs> if possible. Um, but are the Fairy Gold Fields responsible for what happened to us? Well, we don't know what happened to you, um, and it's probably better if we don't discuss it uh, because we don't want to get into any liability issues, do we? Is this something that <laughs> happens regularly? Uh, we don't know. The Henge hasn't uh, overgrown like that um, ever before, which was quite a shock in finding you all up there, obviously. Um, but being surrounded by tea bushes, uh, so we many just want bushes. to be sure that as they were not there before you were found that those bushes are not Ferragold tea field property and therefore we are not liable to your condition. But equally, we won't be pushing any 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 fines, any charges for, for trespassing after closing hours. I feel this could be agreeable to everyone, is it? We could do with some tea restocking <laughs> for the rest of our journey. Oh, certainly. Yep, we can we could some certainly Some free samples, you, um, you know. Yes, um, so absolutely. Yes, so being being in the offices, we have plenty of tea around. You are more than welcome to take some with you, uh, especially our perhaps more uh, those with more healing properties. That would be as a gesture of goodwill. Oh, lovely. well, that sounds very agreeable. That's awfully kind of you. And you know, you couldn't happen to uh, have any uh, of those wonderful, like, uh, oh, what are they called? What what are the things we're trying to get? What what's the twin tide tea tournament trying to be? Uh... Spoons. Spoons. You don't have to have any like spare spoons. <laughs> just uh, you know, because you seem so amiable. Orin would appreciate it. 
Yeah. Um, well, we do have. Um, Since you guys are sponsoring the whole thing, I just thought you know, as a as a way to encourage you know, uh, uh, you know, um, um, your your patronage uh, going out there and a positive impact on the world. Yeah. Goodwill. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, yes, we have memorabilia type spoons. Uh, even those handed out uh, during the challenge, you're welcome to take them. Uh, though at this point, they are unfortunately fairly useless, as the tournament ended yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Shaka. That's where Orin's been with That's Petra. Shaka. <laughs> well, maybe we should yes, get that, a though, nice souvenir worth of, course, uh, we have plenty of, of... of Orin. Oh, that would be lovely. Yeah, he'd yes, like that. Yes, indeed. Yes. Uh, and, uh, as an, a participating team, you are, you know, a small, you know, we tried type. Yes, we're, we're, yes, we can organise something like that. I did Absolutely. the Twain Tide Tea Tournament, and all I got was this lousy teaspoon. <laughs> Well, we probably won't say lousy on it. Um, oh, but that's, sorry. A, that's a large sentence to have on a but small you could, spoon. Just, just all the way across. Yeah. Gwen, I can, I can. Once <laughs> we get on the road, I can engrave it for you. Oh, fantastic! With my tattoo kit. <laughs> Yeah. So we, you all, you are all happy to sign. Yeah, thank you. Why not? Um, I can mean... I just do a bit of an investigation check on it, just to make sure I've read all the fine print, please? Oh, of course, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would also like to read actually what it says. Yeah, I want to know the fine print. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, that's a non-natural twenty. Ooh. Oh, very nice. Um, yeah. First thing that you notice is that each of these forms has been tailored to each of you specifically, and oh. they not only mention your names as you had written them down in the sign-up, but also the Abraca lads as a group. And yeah, it kind of covers everything that he said, that they're not liable uh, for anything, but also seems to cover just any tea-related illness that you might have in the future. <laughs> oh my god! covering themselves on all bases. Um, but then, yeah, getting down to the fine print, you do notice that it says that if the Abraca lads are found to be in breach of this agreement, um, i.e. Uh, not denying any slanderous rumours that connect you and them, uh, then the Ferry Gold Company and Estate are entitled to twenty thousand gold pieces paid in full by each member of the party. <laughs> what? <laughs> this contract is ludicrous. <laughs> um, I'm afraid we're going to have to just make a few amendments to this uh, contract. Um, I think you can see mm -hmm. there's some things in there that wouldn't be really entirely appropriate. Uh, I think it's incredibly appropriate. Um, uh, I mean, I didn't leak. I didn't draft these myself. The legal department did, uh, okay. but. Uh, this is it's a pretty standard uh, document just uh, all all sides all parties um having no connection great so gwendolyn gets a pen and starts putting a line through all the things she doesn't agree with <laughs> we're going to get rid of that and yes there will be no fine for any of us uh, we don't intend to say anything ah. bad but um of course uh we've certainly put a bit of a sour taste in our mouth by writing things like that in here Yes, uh, we, we, you have to sign the document as... as uh, stop, if you could just stop. That. <laughs> nope, I, we nope, just I need to... Um... <laughs> do you know who my father is? Well, you don't. Yes. And do you really rather wish you didn't know? Yes, okay. Well, if you're, if you're unhappy with this contract, I believe uh, the alternative that I was, uh, I was told to, to share with you is um, that we could just fine you £20,000 for trespassing. <laughs> Gwendolyn turns and looks at the others like, oh, shit. <laughs> 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 Can we not uh, move for an addendum to be made? Um, I mean, we we found find most of the terms agreeable. Just the bit about not being being fined for not denying a rumor, or if the rumor has no, um, s you know, basis and sub substantiality to it, then what's what's well, the harm? I mean, if, if you're very happy to deny uh, a rumor, uh, as you just did, <laughs> wonderful, you're well in well in practice, then the, the, then it won't be an issue, surely. Okay. I think Juna just signs and is not very happy about it, but is like, we could go round in circles. We've either got to pay it now or pay it later. We're likely going to have to pay it later, but at least we're not paying it now. <laughs> and we were not under arrest for trespassing. No, no, you are free to go once you've signed these documents. I mean, we're big fans of the produce you make. That's wonderful. So we're unlikely to say anything bad about you unless perhaps you've got something like a secret army somewhere. <laughs> Inside check. Inkinu in in fumbles his pen. <laughs> yep, you're welcome to insight. We never check. know who's a baddie in this game. No, ev yeah. ev everyone sucks. The fer fairy fairy gold tea fields are actually the big baddie. Oh, I can imagine that. I think they've been brewing on something for a while, to be fair. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'll leave that alone then. 
<laughs> oh, girl. That was a lovely 22. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Who's average now? Who's average now? <laughs> Who's average now? I take claim of the title, Africa Lab. Less than average. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the, the army quote, uh, sort of comment really confuses him. So you get the impression that if if the Ferry Gold Tea Company do have some hidden army, he has no part in it. And that idea <laughs> is just like the, the impression you get is they've got a, a fairly sort of strong security team, but he wouldn't refer to that as an army. Yeah. Fine. Do you have a fresh one of these or do you have a rubber? No, we have a fresh one. And he pulls one straight out of the desk. With your <laughs> <one now. laughs> Just in, case, just in case. We will be taking some of that healing tea, though. Of course, yes. Uh, yes we're going to stock you up. Uh, and, and again, hand out some spoons to you each as well. Mm. And what um, was your name? Uh, Dr. Humbert Mattis. Dr. Humbert Mattis. I shall remember that name, Dr. Humbert Mattis. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. And the, um, the, the, <laughs> the, the rest we had, the, the dreams, were they... Oh, gosh. <laughs> dreams, Your yeah? dreams? We haven't been under any kind of magic while we were asleep. Uh, no, no. Uh, we um, well, we, we ensured that you were stayed. Um, well, we tried feeding you whilst we were asleep, but like sort of soups and and drinks and things. But uh, nothing. No, no, no magic. Hmm. Can I insight check that, please? Yeah. I might end up just chalking this up to bah. Henge. Yeah. Weird magic stuff. Aver- an average 13. <laughs> 13. No, he seems to be telling the truth on that yeah. front. Like, cool. he seems confused as to why you're talking about dreams. Great. Uh, were, were the dreams of any concern to you? Or... No, just I'm interested in dreams. Oh. Well. Anyway, uh, we should yeah, well, be going. Of course. Um, yes, if you were, uh, as you uh, head on out, um, I'll... Uh, Organise everything. Would you like prefer to wait here or outside in the courtyard? Or I would love to in the courtyard. That'd be yeah. nice. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, having not moved for a few days, it's probably best to stretch the legs. Thank you, Doctor Mattis. Of course, of course. Um, Doctor Humbert Mattis. Thank you all for signing, and um, I hope I never see you again in the nicest of ways. <laughs> oh, it's entirely <laughs> yes, reciprocated. <laughs> um, so he kind of like. Leads you out, uh, and the nurse, you can tell that the nurse has been waiting at the other end of the corridor. Um, and as you approach, whispers something to somebody next to her, and there are footsteps, multiple footsteps, <laughs> as they walk away. And as you get to the end of the corridor, you do just see a couple of security guards just idly loitering by the door. Um, <laughs> just been airwaking. Yeah, and uh, sort of this nurse leads you all the way through a couple of more corridors, downstairs, and it Actually, the further they lead you through this space, it feels just more and more officey and a little bit more administrative. Uh, unless there was a small coziness going on in the in the infirmary, at least. But leads you outside into a little courtyard with um, potted plants all around the edge, uh, but open to a road uh, beyond. Uh, after about sort of twenty minutes of waiting, a different uh, staff member arrives with a couple of little like. Um, Hessian type bags uh, and sort of hands them to each of you almost like goodie bags um, <laughs> as you, uh, well um, we were taking bets but didn't know which. who was it that woke up first we'll look at Gwendolyn uh, that was me ah okay well I'll let the others know uh, enjoy the rest of the, the, the festival the festival? oh of course you've been asleep um, well somebody won the tournament so uh, the town's having a festival oh who won? Oh, oh, lovely. Uh, the Shattered Runes. Do you know them? We don't know the Shattered Runes, do we? No, I don't think you do. No. Okay. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoy the celebrations. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Let's all wander back inside. Well, festival kind of sounds ideal for hearing folklore and stories and yeah. perhaps finding out more about the Henges, like Ginger suggested. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Time to engage tourist mode. Oh, it's a shame we didn't win that spoon tournament, isn't it? Oh, yes. I think it might have been hard for us to have won, even if we were awake. 
Oh yes. Is our is our cover then that we're like a, an adventuring party? Well, no, our cover is that we were in the spoons tournament and we got here too late, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just talking long That's here. why I'm saying it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Curses are. Oh, no. Oh, no. What a shame. We should have blasted off at the speed of light to, oh. to win that tea tournament. But alas, we must drown our sorrows. <laughs> Not in tea. <laughs> It was fun, though. It served its purpose. <laughs> yeah. Well, doing the tournament got us closer to where we wanted to go anyway, so... It sure did. It's, it's kind of a win. I think it did what it needed to do. It was quite fun. And we'll continue to do so today. <laughs> yes. Do we, wa- do we want to... Um, I don't know if we want to go straight into the festivities. Uh, do we want to like find a quiet corner to like stake out and do what we need to do? Um, it's been quite a while since we've uh, checked in on people in other places do we need to find a safe space to do that yeah yeah why don't we why don't we find some lodgings get ourselves together and head out to the streets yeah sure sure thing sounds like a plan get some provisions for the journey uh question i'm Mm. just assuming that ruana has been there this whole time but is she still there david (laughs) Uh, yeah did ruana drink anything no no we left her outside uh she's still a dog She's still a dog, in which case we'll say that, yeah, she's kind of, she was like next to your bed the whole time. Cool. Um, cool. And was very excited when you've all woken up. I sort of forgot about her for a second <laughs> in all of the sleeping. <laughs> so, David, are there people heading along to the festival that we can see, that we can ask for directions to lodging? Mm, so as you sort of walk along the path that you're on, it's sort of like a riverside walk uh, with the tea fields like stretching up into the hills to your left. Um, as you sort of wander along and reach the the bridge, you realise that the this whole side of the river and the bridge is almost completely locked off uh, by Ferrigold, the the Ferrigold Tea Company. This oh this whole God. side of the river, this space is entirely theirs because there is a lot of security at the gate, a little crowd there, and whilst you know there there, there are workers still up and about the tea fields themselves, there just seems to be more tourists being sort of slowly led in in like small groups one or two at a time at this security gate but nobody stops you leaving uh, especially seeing that you're carrying these little hessian bags as well they're like oh yeah they probably mm. come from the gift shop could you recommend any places to stay in the town i can imagine it's quite crowded with the festival but oh uh, yeah i mean there's a couple of different places um what you got we got the swan inn there's um river's view uh if you want to cross right away over into ellerton you probably have better better luck in the lodging house over there but i don't know if you've not got a place already uh uh you, you might be hard pressed to find somewhere lots of people come in over the last couple of days okie dokie can i just ask before you go who woke up first <laughs> oh my gosh it was me ah never mind no oh, did nobody <laughs> why did no one bet on me waking up first well i mean some people did but i, I didn't who did you bet on out of interest hmm. i thought it'd be the masked chap ah. i don't know if i should be offended or not <laughs> oh gwen i think it's because you sleep like an angel you know it's like you get you like nothing could wake up that perfect face when it's in slumber you are quite smooth, Mr. Mast Bard. Like butter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, um, so, well, I, I think that I, I like the sound of the, 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 the place, the view of the river. What's it called again, my friend? River's view. The river's view. Oh, I like the river's view. Yeah, should we head there? Yeah, that's... Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Ladissa. Ladissa runs that, so... Uh... We are of a particular um, class of uh, individual, my good sir. Like, you know, we, we like the finer things in life. So would you would you say the River's View is, is a place that patronages the, uh, you know, the, 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 well, the well-endowed with purse? <laughs> well-endowed. Uh, well-endowed? Um... <laughs> with pi- with sure. purse and with, <laughs> with coin. <poise. laughs> with those, poise. Those with poise. a good... With... A well-endowed purse. Uh, yeah, you know, you know, it's nice. It's right. Uh, it's right on the, uh, right on the shore. So you can actually. It's a nice view of both rivers. Is uh, it's nice. Very well. Yeah. We we get directions from him, and we go there. Yeah. Um, and yeah. It kind of. Yeah. Directs <laughs> you through the town, and yeah, basically says like follow the shoreline a- a- along, and you'll it'll be fairly obvious. Um, as you cross over the bridge, that that music that you heard earlier, Gwendolyn, is is slowly getting louder and louder and the streets are 
rammed full. Yeah, like sort of there's loads of people like sort of rushing about. You can tell almost that so many of them are like Twain Tide tea tournament teams. Mm. Um, like little groups of five seem to be like pottering about here and there. <laughs> Um, there are copious stalls selling food and drink, and there are a number of different uh, tea houses as you're walking along, all with their doors open, all with queues of people streaming out, all leaving with tiny little paper cups. Um, street performers, like uh, sort of a couple of acrobats, some more singer types. There's one guy stood on a corner just telling really bad, dull jokes that nobody is paying him attention and he's getting into a fight almost, but like you, you're sort of hustled through these different these different moments until eventually you sort of edge your way round, find uh, a path that leads you close to the riverside and, and there you see the river's view. It's quite a, a large as, tavern. As we're walking to the river's view, June is mm. going to say to the others... Do we want to stay somewhere where these people know that we're going? Guy, I know you said you like the sound of the river's view, but do we want to go to one of the other places so that we can't be traced? Call me paranoid, but I don't trust anyone right now. That's a fair question, Mr. Thorne. That's, that's a valid yeah. point. That's a valid point. Okay. We can we can slum it. I don't mind. Even though we are now people of uh, <laughs> of coin. Of of wealthy <laughs> of wealthy pupilage like I, d- I just am worried that I, d- I don't I don't know who to trust anymore and I, they they seem just like jobs worth but people seem like all type types of things mm. these days no they do give off the impression that they run things around here so eyes mm. will be on us at all times yes sorry guy it's okay do you know. Anything that's not under the stars is fine by me, so let's do it. <laughs> it. It does seem like a place of gossip, though, and, you know, everybody knew that we were asleep. Everybody knew who we were, and it's... David, is it, like, it's it's town, villagey vibes. Smaller. Yeah. So not, not compared to, like, we've been in a big city for quite a while. Oh, yeah, Is it yeah, more like feels... Vernock Rise size, or...? Yeah, like, the, the buildings are two stories tops like mm-hmm. there's the occasional three-story building but like most of them are pretty low um they're kind the proper like pride-y? almost tudory like um yeah wooden beams white white painted uh plaster yeah there's it's, it's an air of that and then occasionally like an air of like slightly more brickwork mm-hmm. for, for the slightly newer buildings mm. but um yeah no it's still it's very it's a fairly cozy place yeah mm. this this feels like a small town where you know news travels fast and especially strangers coming to town that were passed out for two days i feel like wherever we end up accommodation wise they'll somebody will tell someone yeah well as long as we just keep our activities fairly simple there's nothing for them to you know Report on. disrupt aye but like uh like Juna says there's no harm in like uh keeping our whereabouts loosey-goosey so should we go to the swan yeah yeah. Let's go to the swan. To the swan! Cool. Having not asked directions for the swan in... Um, <laughs> there's got to <laughs> be signposts little... or something, David, please. Well, no, no, no. But like, it, just say, it takes you a short time to, like... I think that's fair. ...of yeah, wandering that, it, it, through the town. It's one of the elements of Dungeons & Dragons is role-play and asking questions. Okay. Yeah. We can't expect it to all be handed to us on a play. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a tourist information centre. <laughs> oh, wait! <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, but so yeah, it takes you a little while, but at the same time, again, you're walking through this fun atmosphere. There's lots of music and stuff going on, so it is. It's a very, it's a very enjoyable stroll through the town. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the Swan Inn is sort of further south, away from the river, and it's a, it's a smaller place than the River's View. Sort of a, a three-story building. Uh, as you walk in, it's sort of fairly low ceilings, um, so you're sort of ducking uh, occasionally, Gwendolyn. But there's a, a couple of people milling about a sort of a bar space at the front um, and a, a young chap, um, sort of mahogany skinned human, uh, sort of shaved uh, hair, short, sort of smiles as you come in. Hello. Hey. Um, are you here for a drink? Can I help you with anything? Do you have any lodgings for the night? Uh, lodgings. Um, let me have a quick uh, check. And he sort of pulls a book from behind behind the bar, starts flipping through pages quickly. It says, um... 
We've just had a cancellation, actually, but it is only for a double room. So uh, it's not necessarily the size for all four of you, if you're looking for all four of you. I mean, we're used to squeezing in. Yeah. That'll be fine. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah if, the, if, yeah. if we could have that one, that would be lovely. Absolutely. Um, obviously, and, and with uh, with the festival being on and there being so much uh, demand for rooms, uh, this one it is 10 gold pieces for the night. Is that, I think is we that... can stretch to that. Yeah, that'd be lovely. Oh, you can. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, right. oh, good. Okay. Uh, that does come <laughs> with breakfast as well, that 10 gold pieces before you get. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, all right. Wonderful. Uh, who should I sign you in as? The Abraca lads. And he looks up. He goes, who woke up first? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gwendolyn oh kind of looks at everyone like, I said so. And then like, it was me. Ah, it was you. Oh, good. Oh, good. I'll let everyone know. Was this a town-wide bet? Why does everyone know about this? Is there like a conveyor belt where people just wander into our wandered into our infirmary and just looked at us? No, no it's... Uh, so, from what I, I heard it from, my sister who heard it from, uh, a lot of us work over in the tea fields. So, obviously, you know, the families and, like, it, it, it just everyone found out. There's this whole group of sleeping people in the... Uh, in the Around the town, and then you didn't wake up, and got us worried. I'll be honest. Oh, worried it was something catching, but you, we all seem fine. Yes, it, has this never happened to anybody before? There have never been people sleeping near the henge. Oh no, they lock the whole thing up, the whole fields up every night. So oh, yeah, Africa lads. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Swan in are very happy to uh, to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. That if you could not spend two full days of sleep, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends on how soft your beds we are. Can't promise. Oh, I mean, it's it's a nice bed. I'll be honest, that one. Uh, but like I say it's just a double. Do you want anything uh, from the floors or anything for the for those of you who can't squeeze in the bed? Yes, if you've got anything bed rolly or any yeah. extra bedding, we can kind of yeah. pitch up on the floor. Probably got some extra blankets we can lay down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's not as. Like I say, well, you're sitting the outside, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Um, who's paying? I will. I'll pay. Oh. Yeah. Should we do half and half, Juna? Half and half. Half and half. Great. And Five gold from me. And would you like uh, any requests for breakfast? Ooh. Ooh um... Whatever, oh, whatever well, you're giving. Eggs. Twain tied. <laughs> I would like a local delicacy, please. A local delicacy? Um, I could suggest Hina Dunn's buns. Oh, yes, please. I've heard famous things about her buns. Oh, yeah, they are nice. Oh, yeah. The Hina Dunn's buns and eggs? And eggs. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and do you do mimosas? <laughs> mimosas? Not normally, not normally in the morning, but we could probably uh, rustle something up. I mean, they are a breakfast drink, really. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, if you want to drink it, yeah. Just... Yeah, we've got some stuff. Thank you. No worries. Something to look forward to tomorrow. Sure. Yeah. We're very much in the festival vibe, he says, as they're, like, I assume going in the direction of their room. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, you're all sort of shown up. You're given the key to your room, which is basically the size of the double bed. There is a foot like path on either side that, you know, even as it sort of this chap sort of showing you where he's going to put some blankets down, it looks a tight squeeze for whoever's on the floor. Hmm. Ruana instantly jumps on the bed and sort of sits right in the middle of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and do you want? Do you want? Does anyone want a, a round of teas or something just whilst you're settling in? That would be lovely. Yes, please. Oh yes. Yeah, please. All right. Uh, any particular brand type brew? Surprise us. Yeah. yeah, the local variety would be nice. Oh, we've got nine local varieties, but yeah, I'll get you something. I'll get you a selection. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Um, and he sort of wanders away. <laughs> Grace here, keeping you updated with all things No Small Roles related. A massive thank you to our newest patrons, Ricardo, Captain Jam and Derek Rushing. Your support helps us to keep making this show, so big love and big roles to you all. We currently have a one-shot in post-production that will be releasing on Patreon in August. To find out more about becoming a patron, head to www.patreon.com forward slash no small roles. Another great way to support no small roles is to leave us a review on places like Podchaser or iTunes. And you can even rate us five stars on Spotify. Of course, nothing quite beats good old word of mouth. 
we'd love you to take a moment to personally recommend us to your friends, families and polycules. Thanks to you all, we have recently hit 30,000 downloads, which is ridiculously fabulous, to be honest. And for those of you who enjoy a little theatre, you can see the brilliant Ben Galpin in Open Bar's production of Twelfth Night, currently in full swing. And Romeo and Juliet, with our one and only Vicky Gaskin, will be kicking off on Monday the 24th of July. Both productions are touring Fuller's Pubs in London and the south of England this summer. Go uh, quite a bit further north this August, and you will find the delightful Daryl Bailey at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival, performing in one-man show, Yippie Kaye. You'll find all the links that you need in our show notes. That's all from me for now. Let's get you back to the story. Well. Well, okay. That was interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is a weird town. Yeah. I mean, it's a small town. People talk. It's the same in Pride and everybody knows everybody's business. And if they all work together, it makes sense. True. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I, I mean, the fact that we were asleep for two days and the, the weird dreams and it's all very odd. Mm. So, um, Juni, you said you wanted to, uh, to do a bit of a snooping, no? Yeah, you did. Yes, if you don't mind, I'll get that over and done with now. Great. Gwendolyn's going to go look out at the window at the festival. Sure. She's itching to go and get in there. <laughs> and Juna is going to cast Scrying on Heron, please. <laughs> okay. Juna's uh, paranoia increases. <laughs> um, yeah, what's the ritual that you perform? Or, like, how do you perform your scrying? Um, so I think she gets her quarterstaff with the amethyst orb, and it's almost like... I played a game at Christmas where it's like Pictionary, but you like write with the pen and then it lights up and then it like <laughs> you draw it and it comes up on the telly. So I think it's a bit like that. She sort oh, of cool. like starts drawing like the like it's sort of a bit like a cinema, isn't it? So she sort of draws where she's going to see it from and draws where she's going to be. And mm. then it all sort of starts animating. Mm hmm. And yeah, as it sort of, especially as you're focusing on a heron, like, even like around the lines that you're drawing, like parts of images start filling in until you've got this entire view of him. Um, and he is sat on a doorstep with a sandwich and a cup of tea. It's quite sunny where he is. Um, it's quite hard to tell his surroundings. He, like I say, he's, he's sat on some kind of doorstep. He's sat, you can see an open door behind him, sort of almost like cottagey vibes. From, from the corridor beyond, but they fade out. But not somewhere that I recognise. Not somewhere that you recognise, and not his house in Vernock Rise, at the very least. Mm-hmm. Um, and as you kind of, like, sort of examine the space around him a little bit more, see him from other angles, like, you get the impression that it's, there's almost like a clearing that this cottage is in. There are some trees around. Then he seems to react to somebody, somebody's voice, but you don't hear them. And then he stands up, sort of, puts his, his cup down, uh, takes one last bite of the sandwich and drops that down next to it and then starts walking further into this clearing, uh, further into the trees. Um, and you hear him say, Is Pellegree ready to get back to work? I know, I know, but we can't afford to wait too long. But Bray's already got Liana up again and I know it's different, but... but okay. Uh, I'll need to check back in with the consortium soon before too many eyes turn my way. Yes, yes, I I understand. Yeah. And then the vision fades. Whoa. David, may I ask a favour? Could you repeat the last bit? Like, is Pellegree ready? There was a lot of names. It just would Mm. be really nice to hear that bit again, if that's all right, please. So I said, uh, is Pellegree ready to get back to work? Uh, I know, but we can't afford to wait too long. Bray's already got Liana up again. I know it's different, Bray. but Bray, B R A Y, B Bray. Is the I wonder if the I wonder if Liana is like the tiefling that drowned, or the, or the faceless footman. Uh, and then I'll need to get I need to check back in with the consortium soon before too many eyes turn my way. So Bray is like a necromancer, or the person who makes the ring magic work, because two people from Children of Havoc died in the bunker. Faceless footman and giggles. 
No, Giggles. The is it Giggles the invisible one? Giggles. That's what you've referred to as. Yeah. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, we've yeah, yeah. Her. So that's two yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of those two has been revived already. Liana was the name I overheard that night. I yeah. Snuck through in the homeward door. Mm. What was the context, Gwendolyn? It was just a name I caught. It was hard to hear. It was muffled. Hmm. And we haven't heard of Brave before, have we? No. We can at least narrow it down to two people who that might be. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Do do we want to make contact with Heron? Nope. <laughs> I don't. I'm I'm so torn. Mm. I don't. The longer we keep him in the dark, the more we have an advantage over whatever it is he's planning. He needs information and he needed us to get it for him. So if we have something over him, we are in a position to bargain, go on the offensive, what have you. But I don't think we have mm. anything to talk to him about yet, other than just pointing fingers. But that's just my opinion. I don't know what yeah. your thoughts are. Oh, I do agree. But there's also a lot of questions that I think we need answers to. But we just don't know if we, the answers he gives us are going to be truthful or not. Mm. No. And considering the actions of the people he's associated with, the assassination attempts, the, the chaos in the city, how much of that do you really want to, you know? I want to know it all. <laughs> oh, so do I. I mean, if we want to get inside this guy's head, I mean, it could be an idea maybe to contact him Speak to him, let him know we're okay, we're in sort of in flux at the moment, and then spy in on him again to maybe see what he's talking about us. But he knows that we know about his identity, right? There'll be no room for, like, double bluffing, right? But then do we not want to contact him and say we we know that you're involved with the children of... Like, the, to sort of tell him that we know what we know he already knows? Because at the moment... We've just gone AWOL from that. And that's probably to our advantage. Can you imagine the conversation going, ah, Heron, we've found you out. We know what you've been up to. And I'm goes, not saying we say we oh, found well, you out. Not. I'm no, saying no, we engage I'm, him in a conversation. I, I, I know what you're getting from Miss Thorne, but... I don't like him being no. this loose end out there mm. who knows so much about us. Well, it's, it seems like everyone we've run into contact knew everything about us before we even spoke to them. Heron knows something very particular about me, that the only other people who know it are you. Yeah. And Kieda. Same goes for Erida, um, the consortium. They all know th things about us. He all. knows lots of sensitive information. Have you tried to care sending to the professor? Oh, you can't. She can't. She can't. Oh, yeah, of course. Um. <laughs> yeah. Gosh, that would be useful. That, that is what that would I would useful. love to do, but I can't. And you can't scry on him or anything else like that? No. Oh, that's hard. I think maybe we can find somewhere in the middle. I think, like Inkidu says, maybe bide our time a little longer. Keep an eye on him. Keep an eye on Pellegree and the other members of the Children of Havoc that we've seen. See what we can gather from looking at all of them. And then in a few days, decide what we want to do then. But it gives ourselves a bit more time to try and at least get a little bit more information. Very well. But I, 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 I do think we should contact him eventually. But just give ourselves a few more days to feel ready to do that. Aye. We need some cards to play. All right. Speaking of cards to play, I've got a question I need to ask for myself. Uh, this won't take a second. Actually, you won't even notice at all. Uh, Akidu is going to sit cross-legged on the floor, hands in his palms, and do an inside check. Because it's been more than a day <laughs> since um, <laughs> um, it was suggested to check back inside. While he does mm -hmm. this, Guy's just going to like wave his hand in front of his eyes just to see if it's like, <laughs> <reaction and> shit. <laughs> Gwendolyn's checking the goodie bag as well. Pops an eye open, like, I promise you. You won't notice the time has gone. Well, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is, that's pretty high. I rolled a natural 17. So is that a, my charisma? Oh, so that's a 21. 21. Oh, very nice. Uh, who would you like to talk to? Um, Hina. Hina. Um, and having 
having been very re- well rested for the past few days, <laughs> the energy and like the concentration that it takes to to reach inside, it's far easier than ever. And especially as you can almost, as you sort of push into the space, you can feel Hina trying to like reach out as well. Oh, making a connection with her just happens. And yeah, you get the like sort of the sense that she's sat next to you uh, near the bed. Oh. Evening. Evening. Morning. Morning. What time of day Morning. is it? I don't. I think it's the afternoon. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh well. Have a good sleep. Did you? <laughs> uh, I'm not entirely sure if that constitutes as good or bad. It was just strange. Um. Yeah. How was it for you? Uh, pretty normal for whenever you fall asleep. We fall asleep at different times down there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, of course. Um, so, how, how do you manage to um, get any closer to... Uh... Do I have juicy gossip for you? <laughs> is that what you're asking? It is what I'm asking, but I'm too shy to ask, so lay it on me. <laughs> uh, so, you know him. He's a tight lip bugger. Mm-hmm. Um, so, it took us a while. Got to the point. We were just throwing out random names to see if he'd react in some way or other. I don't have any confirmation that this is who he wrote to, but right. biggest reaction from him, which was an eye twitch, but that still counts in my books. Aye. The one and only Jarella Mabek. Oh, that makes some sense and no sense. Right. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, I kind of know, but why he'd be writing to the steward of the country don't really know but at the same time it just I know they were maybe a bit chummy back in the day so maybe that's why I reacted but that's the only name that really stuck out as as, as it could be it interesting maybe he's to let her know that he's alive yeah yeah he's obviously not telling us what he wrote but no of course not if he's not going to tell us who he wrote he's not going to tell us what he wrote mm-hmm. okay well done that's great um, it's something. Thank you. See, we can be useful, even if we are stuck in your head. I never doubted that for a second. Ah, good. You know, it's just nice to make sure you're all there. We're here. We're here. Mm. All right. Anything else we can uh, try and get out of him, or? Um. Yeah, I think the key thing is why her, and what could he have to say to her? Okay, we'll keep pushing. Thank you, Hina. Do look after yourself. I will. Um, If you could drink more coffee, I'd appreciate that myself. I am looking forward to my next cup. I like tea, but coffee's... Coffee's where I'm at. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. All right, coming up. All right, I'll get some answers. Speak to you soon. Speak soon. Bye. And in like a sort of almost like a happy hop off of the bed, she's gone. (laughs) That you look really (laughs) relaxed when you do that sort of thing. I just really want to like understand how to get zen... Like that when when you are looking inward, you know what I mean. Wait, I, yeah. did it happen already? Yeah, we're, we're <laughs> done. I'm done. <laughs> wow. Did we see anything when Hina appeared when he sp- spoke to her? Did we see any like flash Ooh, of her or anything? Make, mm. Mm, just what's your passive perception? Twelve. Your passive perception. eleven. Oh. <laughs> um, I rolled very ro- low for that, so there is like the the smallest like corner of your eye type thing uh for almost all of you but as you're kind of moving around the room you're not really concentrating it it's almost like like a glint of light through the window and you almost in that glint of light think you might have seen something some shape but you know it's just a glint of light not nothing that like worries you cool. in any way mm. thank you bear buddy it's okay it's not a shape because obviously i've seen hina in in Kidu's vision it's Mm, not to the point where I would be like was that that person? (laughs) no exactly like literally just like a flash of light across the eyes it's Mm. cool but yeah yeah, like sort of thinking about it yeah or maybe that could have been somebody at the end of the bed interesting um oh yeah uh as as I'm continuing because we're a mid-flow conversation with Gaius it's just like (laughs) we're snapping back into real time um oh yeah um I don't think I told you guys but um um, Petra could see my, could see Hina when I spoke to her back in, um, before we teleported. 
Oh. Oh. So it's like a sort of like a, a ghost, like uh, 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 unbodied. Yeah. yeah, like an unbodied, like a uh, like ethereal sort of like plane thing. Yeah, maybe it's strange though because when I speak to Gil and the others, time kind of stops or slows right down, but I can quite clearly see that she was clocking Hina, and hmm. yeah, as if she was there with me. At the time. Mm. Maybe what happened to your friends is similar sort of magic as what put Petra in that jar. Except you're the jar. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And when she wanted a, a host body, I tried to edge towards her, see what, how she'd react. She moved away from me every time. She didn't want to fight for space <laughs> in there, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty crowded. Yeah. Whew. I don't tell the others about Drella. Hmm. <laughs> okay. There's nothing to report yet. What did I find in my goodie bag, David? <laughs> oh, so you have a wonderful selection of teas. Um, <laughs> in every bag, uh, there are two spoons. Um, there is uh, a nice wooden one mm. uh, that looks a little bit more practical, uh, and then a sort of a commemorative. It looks. Like it could be silver, but it's probably just silver plated, like, you know, fake silver in some way. Um, another one that's much more commemorative. But yeah, you each got a, a slight different selection of different tea bags and tea leaves, depending on um, the selection in your in your bag. Um, mm. As you sort of get them all out to, <laughs> to compare goodie bags with each other, <laughs> um, you find you, your whole selection includes... Uh, Twain Tide Tea, uh, Dragon Barley, the Dravain Standard, some more Witch Brew. Um, you get uh, one single tea bag of Focus each. Uh, Dravain's Finest another, as another brand. Uh, spiced Ingot and some Good Berry Brew as well. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. So we've all, we've all got a Focus Tea each because that's the one that's like yeah. a plus something, isn't it? Mm. So yeah, the focus tea is a uh, a cold infusion, and it grants advantage on your next skill check. Oh, okay. Hmm. Nice. After drinking it. And good berry tea, I'm assuming, works the same way as good berry. It's an extra hit That's point. That's the good berry spell. Exactly. Um, ah. Gives you a hit point. Um, and keeps you fed. Makes for the you day. feel fed. Exactly. Yeah, Ooh. I used to have good berry when I was had my ranger. I really liked it. Uh, yeah, now you've got a selection of small tea bags that do a very similar thing. Hmm. Yay! Nice. Interesting. Food buffs. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, shall we go downstairs and ask what the uh, highlights of the festival are? Yeah, let's. Um, oh, Juno, I was wondering if we could send a spe- sending spell to Myra and Ferrisine. Oh, yes. 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 I, I've just been thinking about it because... Um, I know they hadn't reached Pryden yet, but just to check in on them, it's been a while and... Yeah, well, should we see how today goes and maybe we could even do it later today? Brilliant. Sounds like a plan. Lovely. I'm very keen to go and hear some folk stories. Oh, yes, me too. Absolutely. To the festival. To the festival. The festival. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so you do you all wander downstairs um, and whilst because this this festival is is it's clearly been triggered by the end of the of the tournament but it meant that like the kind of planning side of it isn't as clear there are a whole (laughs) host of activities but they're all kind nobody really knows what time they're supposed to be on or what's happening and all of those kinds of things so you do kind of find yourself wandering out in amongst the crowd without a sense of direction but enjoying the atmosphere is there anything in particular that you're all looking for or hoping to do whilst you're there I'd like to find someone who looks good and local. Good and local. Um, <laughs> so maybe local. maybe like a, a tea shop owner rather than like someone on the street to ask about yeah. folk tales. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so a lot of the tea shops are quite packed full of people. So trying to get the attention of the owners and the servers is proving quite difficult. Uh, but you do manage to find 
sort of some of the more normal shops, yeah. as it were, are a little bit more approachable. And even like those, the people working there are kind of like attending to a few customers, but hanging out by the doors and chatting. And again, just enjoying the atmosphere. Everyone's got a cup of tea in hand. Um, it, there are almost people moving around the streets, just filling up other people's cups. Um, if there's someone with like Jenny vibes, that would be really mm, nice. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So nearer stables, actually. Um, you find sort of toward the centre of town a, a fairly sort of expansive stables, but there are a few sort of stable hands uh, sat near the door, um, and one of them, yeah, a younger chap. He's, he's sort of he looks like he's been working all day, but he's sort of sat down for a bit and uh, sort of is quite happy to talk to you. Uh, he introduces himself as Kosh. Yeah, he's, he's trying to grow himself a little moustache, but it's not quite working. Aww. Well, you say uh, he's probably like mid thirties to forties, uh, so <laughs> still off. It's cute. It's cute. Well. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but he's like, uh, yeah, yeah. I can, I can help you out. I've grown up here all my life. Uh, my family works in tea, uh, tea fields. Uh, I've got, I've got the stables in. I help take care of. Uh, yeah. What? How can I help? Are you new in town? Well, yeah, we're 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 in town today. We've been. I take it you're one of the teams, are you? Yes, yes. Unfortunately, yeah, we weren't. Yeah, what? We didn't win. <laughs> oh no, it's all right. Them orcish ladies did, didn't they? Oh yeah, the 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 broken runes or something. The shattered runes. Yeah, shattered runes. Yeah. Shattered runes. That was it. Yeah. Well, well done to them. Oh yeah, yeah. Very impressive. We were just in it for the fun, weren't we? <laughs> Is there going to be like a presiding like winners? Uh, moment or something. Some you... sort of presentation. Oh, I think they've been up on that. The, there's. A, have you been to the town centre yet? No, no, not haven't. yet. No, no. Oh, there's a. If you follow for any sort of directs you a little bit more, it says, "Oh, if down that way, uh, they've got a whole stage set up. Uh, they've been set up there all day. The poor things." Oh, well, that should probably be our next stop. I think. Sure. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. More shows and stuff going on down there. Much more entertainment. Nice to chat to Ooh. you though. Well, yeah. do you sell well, I, we just... these horses? Uh, <laughs> we all say at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I was about to say something completely oh, different. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, we've got horses for, for sale, for travel, for rental, if that's what you need. Well, great. Yes, probably tomorrow we'll probably be ready to set off again, so... Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'd, I would be careful. Uh, what time? If you're leaving earlier in the morning, more chance. I'm just a bit worried that there's, you know, lots of people in town probably want to be taken. Could we in. reserve? Oh, yeah. Something? Put a deposit down. Uh, yeah, yeah, it certainly can. It certainly can. Um, how many horses do you be needing? Um, Horse and cart, enough to yeah. take us four? Two horses and a cart. Yeah. You... Yeah. And a cart as well. All right. Um, how do we feel? Do we need a cart? Yeah. Or would we rather have a horse each? Oh, and gallops. Cart. We'd be faster <laughs> if we had a horse each. Uh, it, it That's true, be. and yeah. we've got the we've got the, we've got the funds for it. <laughs> well, let's check what the prices are for. Yeah, is our stuff small enough to be like packed into saddlebags and you know not? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. you're all carrying yeah Hand everything stuff. with you, so yeah, fine. exactly. Yeah, so my tent stuff is um, gone. <laughs> yeah, that's left. The hex own that now. Yeah, oh, yeah, probably. <laughs> uh, four horses, is it, or is it just three? Oh, he says, looking towards Juna. I suppose, Juno, we could double up, couldn't we? Or or you and Gaius could double up. I probably should have a horse. Or would you like your own horse? I, 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 don't, I don't need my own horse. If fewer horses is going to mean fewer... You're welcome to it. We've got a couple of smaller smaller breeds. If you'd like a horse of your own, Juno. I'll have a horse of my own. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then, all right. I That's can have I'm a chat doing. with them one day. <laughs> What's, what sort of prices are we looking at? Uh, depending on what you go for, um, five hundred uh, gold for for your <laughs> the more hardy fare. But we do have a couple at the lower end at the sort of two hundred range. Um. The older the older ones, you know. Oh, I I'd, I'd love an old horse. It sort of, sort of wanders in, starts showing you around all of the 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 stables, and like it starts mm-hmm. explaining different horses to you. Um, so you're welcome to each choose a horse. Yeah. Uh, and a price range. Juno wants an old horse. <laughs> okay. I want a healthy, strong one. <laughs> that's going to take us. Yep. And that's not skittish around, like, magic. Like, a well-tempered horse. Mm-hmm. Well-tempered horse, yep. I'll go for the middle range. <laughs> Mid-range. 
Like guys, guys doesn't know enough about horses. He's looking at them like purely with price tags on them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think Gwendolyn does know a bit more about horses. She's definitely grown up with them a little bit more. She's a bit more of a horsey girl. So seeing um, that, probably guy will be like, eh, and like, <laughs> at, like just like gesturing to Gwendolyn, like, what do you think of this one? What do you think of that one? Like getting your yeah. Like, she like tries to is. give him like the best advice on the best one that for the price that he wants to spend. Mm. Yeah. Um, but she's probably going to go for a more high-end horse. Oh, nice. Juna chooses her horse by, uh, like, sort of befriending them. I think she sees them as, like, horses of people too. And she, <laughs> like, she doesn't want to get, like, a, a horse that's not going to work, but she definitely is like, well, just because they're old, it doesn't mean that they're any less good than <laughs> the young horses. Um, just- but also she, <laughs> she finds one that she feels like she has a real, like, affinity to, not necessarily for its like usefulness oh are you all just buying the horse versions of your characters yes we are pretty much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no i want a shifty looking horse <laughs> a mask a, a one with like a little a mask little, over its eye yeah, oh little, um, yeah. <laughs> markings around its eye one that's wearing blinders yeah it looks I'm like looking a for an elegant on. feisty yeah. feisty gray mare yeah, yeah. <laughs> blinders is not a bad idea actually um, also, it does make sense for us to have four horses because it means when Orin comes back, oh, yeah, so we can horse. still travel with him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice. If the horses last that long. Mm, we'll mm. see. So, yeah, the, as he's sort of preparing them all um, and sort of shows you, sort of tries to match you up as best as he can with the, with the horses, he does explain the other whole for all four with all of the equipment that you need to go with it, saddles and stuff as well, uh, would come to about 1500 for the four horses. Cool. Cool. Yeah. What's that divided between us? Or we'll do we want to pay? For, should we pay for our specific horses? Because some of us have gone for more expensive horses. Yeah, <laughs> that's fair. Well, I feel like they're all of equal value. <laughs> well, in that case, it's three hundred and seventy-five <laughs> gold each. There you go. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you to um, Juna a well-played look, <laughs> like <laughs> the master teaches the student. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but he, you know, he also agrees that he'll keep them stabled there until, until you're all ready to, to, to take them. But, uh, yeah, once you've all paid, um, he get yeah, separates them from the others and, uh, and sort of, yeah, gets to work preparing them as it were. While you're preparing our horses, Kosh, um, oh, yeah. you seem like, so you said you've sort of grown up here. Yeah. I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a storyteller and a story collector myself. I was wondering if you oh, yeah. had any local folk tales that I don't know like there's a very interesting set of stones up on that hill that just feels like it's steeped in history that that you you could tell us and I I could tell you a story in return maybe. Oh yeah, story swap. Oh yeah, don't mind a story swap. Um right, what do I know about um What's it called? The, the the nine, the nine stones up there. Nine um, stones. The henge. Oh. Yeah, the henge. Uh, um, did I? What? Oh, well, that's a novel name oh, yeah, for I mean, them. <laughs> well, I suppose they are a kind of henge, aren't they? Because it's a group of standing stones. Yeah. But we just call them nine stones. Okay. Um, yeah. What do I know about them? Uh, well, it was uh, one story. I don't know how true it is, and I think I'll be honest. It's probably like fairy gold propaganda a little bit you know oh. make it look like but um right there's this one story that goes that there was like a great drought super dry everywhere uh spread across the whole of Dravain. so who knows how long ago that was i don't remember any droughts my grandparents never said there was any drought i don't know anyway, get off track um uh, lots of people wandering around the place and one family finds the standing stones on top of the hill right all oh, right and yeah, because they were following a dry riverbed. They were thinking, oh, the river will lead somewhere. They see these stones, they climb a mountain, they, they have a look, right? And uh, when they get up there, there's um, there's a cup of tea waiting for them. Right in the middle. And I know it's got that whole thing in the middle, doesn't it? Yeah. So it's probably just uh, water from a well or whatever. Anyway, they, they climb up. There's, there's a cup of tea right there. And uh, they all drink from it. And uh, they hear the voice of the mother of tea. Uh, or something and uh, she shows them how to grow yeah that's I don't know it's nonsense and then she shows them how to grow the stuff right 
and uh, they've been doing that ever since and that's why we got the tea fields right there wow because they just kept drinking and uh, having chats with the mother of tea mother of tea yeah oh what a fantastic story sounds like the most welcoming cult I've ever heard <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's got, it's got that, yeah, it's got that vibe, yeah, yeah. And they, they never said what the family was. It's just a family. Fairy golds. Just a family. I mean, uh, the fairy golds try saying, "Oh, look, it's oh, uh, we've course descended from," but you know, it, it's changed hands over the years. So, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think they're, they're anything to do with it, really. But it's a nice story, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, it's a really you know, lovely sort of, story. Other people be able to tell it nicer than what I did. No, yeah. I loved your delivery. I thought it was uh, it inspired intrigue at every moment. Oh, thanks. Would Would you like a story in return? Oh, I'd love one. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> I've got I've got one ready to go. Oh yes, I've been waiting for <laughs> this bad boy. Is yeah. listening as he starts brushing down uh, Enkidu's new horse. Oh, Gwendolyn's trying to bond with her horse as well at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so little is known about the Sekaiji, as they rarely let in outsiders. And what is known about them is that they are serious and conflicted people. But when you get to know them, you get to see another side of them. They play a game called Fox, Koi, Blossom or the Circle of Life. You say fox koi blossom and then choose one and make your hand into the shape of it. The fox eats the koi, the koi eats the blossom and the blossom poisons the fox. Whoever has the winning life form wins. They use it for fun and to help decision making and is a reminder that even the most serious people have a fun side to them. So that's my story. Gwendolyn looks over at Enkidu as soon as Juna says, the most serious people have a fun side to them and looks at him quizzically. Enkidu just looks confused and like frowns like, hmm? <laughs> Juna does the hand signals for Fox Koi Blossom. So Fox is like, uh, like your hand makes the shape of a... Of a mouth. Like, of a mouth, mouth. yeah. <laughs> like, like, like what you do inside a puppet, right? Yeah, what you do yeah. inside a puppet, mm. yeah. And then the koi is like a sideways wriggly hand like a fish. And Blossom is like uh, Joey doing fire in Friends. You wriggle your <laughs> so fingers. like an upside down yeah, okay. hand. Cool, so cool, it's cool, in cool. world rock, paper, scissors. And yeah, the Sekaiji. <laughs> uh, they're down south, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're kind of, they're further I mean, suppose which way you go, but uh, west from uh, El Tempe. So there's El Tempe, uh, El Tempe, uh, Gridelin as the next region over, a little bit of a, 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 a sea, and then Sekaiji. Hmm. If you're heading west. Hmm. That sounds like it might be useful for us sometime. <laughs> that is a nice story. I mean, I, I, I'll try teaching that game to, uh, to the family. Yeah, see if, uh, see if it takes. Do, do you want to round before we head off? See who wins? Oh, yeah, go on in. Uh, so... All right. So we say fox, koi, blossom, and then you do your hand signal and fox, I'll do mine flower, and see yeah. who wins. Yeah. All right, Ready? let's go. Yep. Fox, koi, koi blossom. blossom. And he pulls a, a fox. And so does Juna. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... This, this is me and David are, up... are playing this on the Zoom. <laughs> so fox is just... What, are they, what happens then? Is it's that, a draw. Who, who we, have to, we have to do it again. Here we oh, go. we both won. All right. Okay, we'll go we again. We both won. All right. Fox, fox koi, koi blossom. blossom. And he tries doing the, the blossom. Juna does the fox again. And uh, that means that the blossom poisons the fox. Oh, you won. Well done. Oh, I won it. Yes, oh, you won. Yes. That's, that's quite good. I can imagine that'd be very good for any kind of decision making. Yeah. And sometimes just for fun. A nice impartial way of, uh, of, of, of yeah, of uh, make, coming to a decision. Yeah. yeah. But thank you so much for your story. I just loved it. No, you're welcome. You're welcome to it. Um, oh, I guess we'll see you. We'll see you soon. Yeah. What time do you want to come by and collect them? Yeah, morning time. Morning yeah, time. Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow uh, we've morning. got breakfast included where we're staying. So. Oh, so yeah, after breakfast. Oh, lucky. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, what was your name? Kosh. Kosh. Sorry, you did tell us that. I yeah. I was just so uh, obsessed with the horses at the time. <laughs> That's all right. What are you going to name them? Your horses. Ooh. 
I'll have to sleep on that one. Yeah, me too. Yeah, me too. I'll oh. have to see what 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 their personality is like. Oh, I've I've got the I've got I've got a name for my horse. Oh, what will you call it, Engidi? Clanius. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> Clanius. 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 Does it mean something? Oh, it does. Um, well, it didn't last long, but uh, I was adopted. I was made a ward of uh, House Monaday. It's a quite prominent family within uh, Mare Vi, and also Alcibiades' father. The name is Alcibiades' father's name? Aye, that's correct. Oh. Okay. Honourable man. So you know his father? I do. Well, I did, rather. Oh, so you, that's quite an interesting connection to have with him. It is, but he's never said a word to me about our relationship, so... Have you ever said a word to him about your relationship? There was a time when I did, but other things are going on. He had other priorities, clearly. Might be worth bringing up one day? I think the others have, and they've got nothing back, so I've stopped trying. Well, should we have some fun? Yeah, let's yeah, see let's go for it. Let's, let's go in the direction of any music we hear. David, do we hear any music? I very much want to go to the sh- see the shattered runes in the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as luck would have it, both following the sound of music and wanting to see the shattered runes leads you to the same place. Huzzah! Um... You, uh, yeah, you find your, yourself uh, moving through the crowd uh, toward a slightly more crowded area, being the town square, where there's quite a large stage set up. Um, and on the stage, there are, is a long table, uh, and sat there are five orcish women. Sort of, uh, all of them, sort of, uh, a couple of them have, have got greyer skin, a few of them have got slightly greener skin. All of them look very happy slightly drunk and they're all dressed <laughs> in uh, these they've all been draped in these red cloaks with little crowns on top of their heads um, and they're having a great time yeah. having a drink laughing with each other they're being served teas and like food across the table in front of them and in a space in front of the table in front of the stage uh, are some performing acrobats um, and there's a small band playing to the side as this little uh, trio of tumblers are like sort of throwing each other up and catching each other and uh, doing a full almost cheerleader type routine. Wow. Uh, and the crowd are like, whoa, it's amazing. Oh, round of applause almost with every trick and tumble. Um, yeah, and that's where you find them. Oh. Should we get some drinks? Yes. Yeah, sure. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah, you sort of stick your head into a, a sort of a nearby tavern. I say tavern. Almost every tavern in this place seems to have sort of a tea shop front there's definitely more brewing and kettles going on than there are like like kegs but there's uh you sort of you, you drop your head into one um grab yourself some drinks uh and luckily just as you're edging out of like more towards the door uh a, a small group get up from a table and leave so you, you plonk yourselves down quite quickly to grab it before anyone else does um and as you're kind of sat there there's a an older dwarvish fellow uh, at a table in the corner who uh, kind of eyes you up a little bit pulls a face a grim sort of expression and then sips his own drink but very much like aware of you hey there you are right there buddy I'm Guy the Mass Bard you may have heard of me and uh, uh, what's your name and uh, do, you, do you hail from this town <sighs> so I guess a sigh turns around and goes I'm not dealing with any bards today if that's alright oh no you've got an affinity for bards no, I, I just don't want to deal with another bard, if that's all right. Oh, we oh. Meant, no, he meant no offence, friend. Just wanted to say no, hello. No, no, I know. You, you, you don't know what's going on, do you? It's fine. No, uh, we've been... Uh, we're quite late. We, we, we arrived quite late. We failed the competition, unfortunately. Um, if it's not too troublesome, do you mind... Oh, you're a team, are you? Yeah, we're a team, yeah. Ah, uh, what's your name? Uh, the uh, Abraca Lads. 
All right, who woke up first then? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, then, <laughs> you know, um, he'll... I love that detail. <laughs> when at the, the bar trying to buy like a jug of stor- strawberry daiquiris. Oh. But when she kind of hears the who woke up first, she just like waves from over at the bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Akini just points ah, towards right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> he kind of turns and uh, as this guy like sees this uh, this jug of strawberry daiquiris in Gwendolyn's hand, he sort of slides his way onto the table. Oh, hello. <laughs> uh, hey. Uh, I take it you're you, uh, into some winnings then, friend. Winnings? Did you bet? What do you mean? Well, you, did you not take a bet on who woke up? Bet? No, I didn't make a bet. It's just a story going around town. You've got to listen to stories, don't you? Yeah. If you're not going to talk to people, what are you going to learn? Exactly. Amen. That's true. And you know what? Yeah. You know, my friend, for person who like you know doesn't want to deal with bards right now, that sounds exactly like what a bard would say. Have you ever partaken with the uh, ancient craft of storytelling? <laughs> Have I ever partaken in the ancient craft of storytelling? <laughs> uh, yes, I have. Oh well, you know what? I'm 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 of a person who you know loves an exchange of ideas and and currency with words. So you know, I've 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 been inspired. My friend over here, he points to over Juno as well, and goes, "Is is a bard herself of sorts?" And um, you know, if you Juno to... tries to strike a pose. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, though be though she be little, she is fierce. Mm-hmm. And, um, I see, I see. and you know, if 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 you were to like share a story, like maybe if it's a local inspired story, I bet you anything, we could give you one just as good, if not better. No, you know what? I'll... How about this, my friend? And he looks right. at the eye that he gave the strawberry daiquiris. If you give us a story that is truly better than one we can come up with, I will buy you a drink. And if I tell a story that is better than your story, you have to buy me a drink. And Kiryu starts dropping the table. <laughs> I see a, a little bardic game, is it? Okay. Now, who then would like to set the tempo of it? Are you going to tell your story first, or shall I? Well, let's uh, do a game of... Uh, Fox Koi Blossom. Fox Koi Blossom to the side. <laughs> <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> and what, pray tell, is a game of Fox Koi Blossom? <laughs> Juna, Juna sort of jumps in and is like, <laughs> to sort of, to warm everyone's juices up. And she tells the story of Fox Koi Blossom to sort of like, <laughs> yeah, as like a w- bit of a warm up act so that they can play Fox Koi Blossom to decide who's going to go first. Gwendolyn has bought everybody, uh, has poured everyone strawberry daiquiris at this point and has gone and bought another jug, which she's intending to do something else with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as I said, okay, okay. Uh, right, you're ready to play, are you? Fox Koi Blossom for the first storyteller. Let's do it! All right. He picks up his fists. Fox Koi Blossom. Blossom. And he does a little blossomy shape with his hand. And Guy does the same. One more time! <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, all right, all right. Good, good. Fox Koi Blossom. Blossom. And he does the fish. And he does another blossom uh, shape himself. Ha ha! Oh, see, your koi eats your blossom. There we go, my friend. Ah, right. Yes. All right, you get to choose. You go first, then. Okay, um, I, I, uh, if I get to choose, then I suggest that you go first, my good friend. <laughs> <laughs> ah, is that how that works? Ah, uh, okay, all right, I see what? You Wait, sorry, sorry, just to clarify. If I won, I had to go first, right? I think it's just if you chose. Yeah, yeah. you can choose. <laughs> Yeah. I think he was trying to encourage you to choose first, yeah. but oh, yeah. <laughs> it's up to you to choose. <laughs> Set the stage, my friend. Okay. Right. Um, little uh, group of you, you're, you're in town, aren't you? Yes. Do you know the story of the Kissing Rivers? A little bit. The local, eh? So, the two daughters of Lake Era, they were having a brief argument between the two of them. One of the sisters ran. She says, I can get to the sea faster than you. And the other, Aelir, she says, Oh no, I know the fastest way to the sea. It's to the east. Ran says, No, it's definitely the west. And the two sisters argued and they bickered until their mother kicked them out. <laughs> right the way south and said, All right, you two, if you're going to prove it, put some words uh, put some words in your, where your money is and go. And Ran, she heads west through beautiful fields, through fields of flowers, through farmers and workmen, and and she starts smelling beautifully. She runs clear as the sky, uh, a shining blue teal. And her sister, Aelir, less 
fun time was had by her as she headed east. You see, her, her journey led her through, through mountains and, and clay banks, and, and she fought herself rocky terrain, tumbling over it. It was a much rougher ride. Faster, yes. However, the two sisters finally met again. Where they sat and they had a nice cup of tea, like, together. And, uh, they realized through their own journeys what a ridiculous thing it had been to argue. But, unfortunately, by this time, both sisters had changed so much within themselves. One sister was clean and clear and the other muddy and clay and... Well, unfortunately, their waters would not mingle anymore. So, they had no choice. They had to continue their journey down to the sea. And they kissed each other on the cheeks and left. Hoping one day that once they reached the shivered shore, they could once again mingle as they had in their mother's lake. And that's my story. Gwendolyn Aww. starts applauding. Yeah, Duna as well. That's that a, was lovely. That's a great oh, story. That was a lovely story. Gosh, that's cracking. That was really good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, to be fair, I've had a little bit more time to prepare folk stories. I know, I was just, I was furiously just trying to remember all from my... I think what I would do is I would go from Gaius's experience and um, he would start regaling the story of... Um, oh, there's so many he could choose from. I think it would be good to go with the story of um, how him and Gwen first met. Yeah. Uh, a, a handsome bard... Um, comes to the rescue of, of a maiden who, and it's all the, it's this idea that this story arc portrays the 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 bard as saving the day as the as the as the lady needs to find her love and is so you know helpless and woe woe is she <laughs> and then as they progress through this like epic story of this traveling towards um, Tillisham slowly but surely like the bard realizes how um, apt and impressive um, the maiden is and how. She saves him from a, uh, a, a a panther that is deformed and is uh, uh, rotting and zombie-like, and um, they meet a weird creature in the woods that's covered with a shawl, and sort of like going back into the sort of like uh, scary undertones of Crowl and everything, and then coming out on the other side, being uh, now great friends and sort of recognizing the importance of like not judging a book by her cover yeah as the story got more dramatic guy's hair was blowing in the wind (laughs) and his teeth were getting shinier (laughs) little by little every little bit as Nkidi just sips his drinks and just points out a pinky finger to like yeah, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I think Gwendolyn will have made like sound effects at each, like when it was the maiden, like, "Oh, I'm a maiden!" <laughs> oh, no. And then, pow, pow! I killed the panther. Woo! Uh, like, <laughs> just bolstering his story. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Juna just sits there, like tears streaming down her face with the beauty of the story. <laughs> All right, so you're a traveling group of uh, performers, are you? I see that was a whole production going on. (laughs) We've spent a lot of time together on the road. We like to add the enhancements when we can. Now, uh, I realize that we did not decide who was going to judge the winner of this this little competition, but you have already bought me a drink, so happy to say I'm the winner in there, if that's... Well, I'm grateful to hear a new story, something I didn't know before, and I quite enjoyed it, so... Enjoy that drink, friend. Absolutely. All right, that's good. <laughs> good stuff, eh? Maybe, uh, maybe you could regale us with another. I, I, <laughs> you'll need to buy me more drinks, eh? <laughs> I do, I do realise you've told me your names. I've not introduced myself. My name is uh, Eustace O'Grathian. Uh, just call me Eustace. It's fine. I go. That's my my name. Uh, I'm a skull, the balladeer, a, a tea house reciter, a satirist, a rhapsodist, a teller of tall tales, or in brief, a bard. Uh, and it's, uh, it's been a lovely meeting you all. Uh, do you mind get, help me get my job back? Um, what? What's your job? And that's where we're going to end the episode. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I like him. Yeah. Oh, I love that. You have been listening to David Knight as your Dungeon Master Ben Galpin as Orin 
Chris Watts as Gaius, Daryl Bailey as Enkidu, Grace Kelly Miller as Gwendolyn, and Vicky Gaskin as Juna. Original music by David Knight. Please tell your friends, subscribe, and follow us on all social media. Thank you for listening to No Small Roles. Anon for now.